Okay, so the Outpost project. This is, um, this is complicated. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. We're 12 months into construction. We started about a year ago. I don't have 12 months worth of construction to report because in the spring of 2021, we pressed pause on this. We regrouped and we onboarded another contractor, Kate and Ellard Taylor with Great Blue Heron Builders. So you're gonna see some new faces in this video. They have a small crew, but we are finally making forward progress again. And I'm proud to be able to show the high quality work that's happening. We've had to make some course corrections and revisions and updates and retool things. and. This is not an easy thing for anyone to take on a project in midstream. And these guys have done an incredible job here. I also want to extend my sincere gratitude, my thanks to my clients for continuing to allow us to document the reality of what it means to build. It's oftentimes a pretty messy process. Today, you know, we're down to me and two carpenters today on this job. Part of that, I think, has to do with COVID. Part of it has to do with just the labor shortage in general. Um, one of the things, you know, about Island Life is that n almost nobody does just one thing. Almost everybody is good at a lot of different things. And so you know, tap into those skills, you know, to make projects happen. The lobster fishing industry, I mean, those guys, for the most part, they fish really hard from about the 1st of July until end of October or sometimes up to around Thanksgiving. And they have to make an annual income in that period of time. While a lot of crews, you know, don't work in the wintertime, we always have. You know, we've employed lobster fishermen okay. quite a lot. Interesting. And the thing is that uh, most of these guys, you know, are really quite skilled carpenters. One of the early priorities, once the building is framed, is to get the roof on. So we want to keep water out of the structure. We have two types of roof coverings on this project. For the flat roofs, we're using a commercial grade rubber membrane, and we fully adhere that to a tapered insulation layer, which is installed on top of a flat roof deck. So it's the tapered insulation that really creates the positive pitch, directing water to the roof scuppers. And those scuppers we actually fabricated just using a heavy gauge aluminum channel that's then flashed in by the roofing contractor. For the pitched roofs, obviously we need to use something that's corrosion resistant. Here we're using a pre-finished aluminum coil stock and we form those into these interlocking pans. The pans are installed using a concealed clip fastening system. They're attached through a high temperature underlayment beneath the metal roof pans. Fabricating these on site just allows us to adjust the width of each one of the pans along the length of the roof so we can center our roof penetrations. And by that I mean things like the flue and any plumbing vent stacks that we have. All the roofs you see here, they're all unvented, or what we call hot roof assemblies. And that just means we're insulating to the underside of the roof sheathing everywhere, which keeps our mechanical runs inside the conditioned envelope, preventing things like condensation. It's just a more efficient way to do that. This also means that we don't have to vent the roof at the eave and the ridge, and that just keeps a really nice, low, minimal profile to everything. It's always gratifying to see the doors and windows installed uh, because it's the culmination of many months of planning and design thinking. There's lots of documents that go into sort of showing the contractor what they need to order. So I want to walk you through some of those drawings that we actually create. We'll start off with the floor plan. The way the architectural set is designed is to take you from drawings which are more broad in scope to more detailed in scope. The further you drill into the set, the more detailed the drawings get. So everyone's familiar with the floor plans and we can see that the openings for doors and windows are called out here on the floor plan. And you'll also notice that they have these different little tags. So this is called a window tag. This is a door tag. We're gonna tag each one of these windows. So we have an A2 window and an A1 window. So in plan, they both look the same. So we need to give the contractor additional information to help them figure out you know, what the difference is between those two windows. So as we come to that particular elevation, you can see we have the A1 window here and an A2 window here. So the window tags are calling out 
two different windows. And you can see that it's very subtly different. There's just a dashed line shown in this one. This is typical of two openings. And then this one is typical of two openings. So those two, and you can see we have a different designation here. So as we drill further down into the set, we'll move into the door and window elevation sheet. And this is the A6 series. And you can see this is just a more detailed drawing. This is at half inch scale. So we're moving from a quarter inch scale, zooming in to a half inch scale. So you can see the A1 window is an awning with a wood screen and the A2 window is just a picture unit. So the awning is denoted by this dashed line here. And couple of things that we're calling out on this, you know, we're calling out where the finished floor is, where we want the finished window to be mounted above that floor and how big the actual unit size is. So it's five feet wide by six feet tall. And then there's a designation here, which is called out as RO and that's the rough opening. So it's basically when the contractor frames this opening, we need to give the unit some room so that we could slide it into place and position it and get it plumb and square. The rough framing is typically gonna be close, but it won't get you perfectly square. So if we were to make that rough opening the exact size, the window wouldn't actually fit in it and it wouldn't allow any room for deflection or you know changes in temperature and humidity and you know differential materials move differentially as we look at this window unit here you can see there's some detail bubbles that are associated with it and if we click on those that brings us to the typical window detail sheet this is drawing a 6.3 and each one of these windows as we cut through the head and the sill and the jam has a set of details and flashing conditions and very specific information that's related to installing that window in the wall system. It's one of the reasons why we choose the window system very early because we need to be able to tell the contractor exactly how to install this window. What do the corners look like? How do we flash them? All of this fits together like this giant puzzle. Additionally on this sheet, I like to include, you know, a typical window flashing sequence. So I'm calling out the steps. So there's absolutely no confusion as to what has to happen in what order and all of the different components of it. Even though the drawing set has a lot of information in it, it's very specific and detailed, it's generic in the sense that our contractor wouldn't be able to use this information to order the window and door package and have it arrive just as we imagine it. We need to provide additional, very precise information. So to provide that information, we're gonna use schedules. And this is an example of the door schedule that we've created for the project. This has all of the door units what type they are, sizing, manufacture, all the different attributes associated with those door units. And then there's the specification. So the specifications are really the place that we use to collate all of this very detailed, precise information. And if we scroll down to the door and window section here, which is section eight, we're able to describe interior finishes and sticking details. You know, maybe there's special sills that we have or glazing uh, requirements that we have. All of that can be provided for in the set of specifications. And the advantage to this is if we have to make a change, say to the cladding color in the future, we can come to one document and update it here rather than in the distributed set of drawings and details that we were just looking at. Taken together, the drawings, specs, and schedules allow the contractor to really help us develop say competitive cost comparisons. So for this project, we looked at Marvin Modern line of windows and we compared that to the Signature Ultimate line of windows. Uh, and eventually this combination of documents will be used to develop the final order for the window and door package. As an architect, I'm thinking about the windows in very early design process, but there's a lot of different considerations that you probably have as a builder, right? What, what are some of those things? They're a really big chunk of the budget, right. yeah. but they also define the space. And one of the things that I really like about, you know, construction and houses is that you design light when you design a building right. and the windows are the light. Building out here on the island, I guess we also have to consider size of the units, right? I could make this whole wall glass, but you have a crew that's trying to get this window into the opening, right? Right, right. <laughs> so we're sort of limited in a lot of ways by the fact that we're building here, right? Right, right. and especially with these windows. I mean, these, these particular windows, I mean, they're large and they're heavy. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing they weigh around 300 pounds okay. a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that two strong guys really struggle. 
to lift them. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So we we you know in order to manage these windows, we we try to have you know four people um, on the window at a time moving it, and um, you know if you look outside this window, you know it's it's 12 feet or so you know down to the ground. So. I mean, you're definitely not going to put these in, you know, on a ladder. Right. Yeah, we had to stage this entire wall, and the staging had to be really substantial staging. You know, I mean, it's not something you can just have a couple of planks out there going on ladder jacks or something like that. Right. There is this process that I think a lot of people don't fully appreciate that construction starts, and we know, let's say the, the windows are going to take 12 to 16 weeks to get, and I don't remember how long these actually took, but the ordering of the windows happens very early right. in the construction process, That's right. right? So you initiate the order, and then Marvin or the lumber yard does a set of shop drawings, right? Right. And they send it to you, and they send it to me, and then right. we both review that, and right. I, I think for this one, it was something like five rounds of revisions that happened for that. So minor changes, because we're looking at, okay, is that the right hardware? Is the screen right? All those things have to get sorted out, right? Right. And then you place the order, and then we wait, and then eventually it ships to where? Ship to the lumber yard. Lumber yard, right? Which right. is where? The lumber yard is about 40 miles away. And then it gets loaded onto a mail boat, which then gets carried out to Isla Ho. Then it gets loaded off the mail boat onto the dock, onto a truck, you know, which then finally gets it to the job site, which sounds kind of complicated, but actually it's a pretty efficient process. I mean, with these units, um, you know, we couldn't just bring them all out at one time. Yes, you know, sir. we bring out, we stage it, you know, we bring out um, three of these large ones, you know, we bring out three or four each day. Okay. Is that limited by the mail boat? Because well, yes and no. I mean, the mailboat has its limits, but the, the mailboat can carry quite a lot. Okay. I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, we can put several lifts of plywood on the mailboat. I look at the hoist at the dock, I mean, as being one of the limiting factors. Yes. It absolutely is. The, uh, the hoist at the dock, it's rated for 1,400 pounds, and we try to keep our lifts down to 1,000. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's quite a lot of material. <music> We're standing in the principal bathroom, you know, as we're talking about these window details and shop drawings and everything, I made every effort to think of all these things through. And as I was reviewing the shop drawings, I noticed with this window being a push out window, you have to open the screen. So this is a giant screen in front of this and it's hinged on that side. And in order to do that, if we have a tub in the way, it's obviously not gonna work. So in the shop drawing, I made it a point to change it from a push out window to a roto operated awning. And that way the screen stays in place, no need to hinge, we can open the window just from here. And I made the change, but I never put it back in the drawings. Right. If it's not on the drawing, it doesn't exist basically. Right. So when it came time to load the windows into the house, you loaded all the windows according to the schedule, according to the elevation drawings and installed this window and lo and behold when we mocked the tub up oh yeah that window is not going to work here and when you got to the guest bedroom you said why do we have a casement window here right right and so right. that's on me because it never got folded yeah. <laughs> back into the truck yeah. we realized that there was going to be a problem when we installed the window but we said to ourselves well <laughs> we're probably just going to eliminate the screen on this window one of the things that you mentioned when you were mocking it up. The way it's oriented on the plan is kind of 45, which is basically pointing you right at this corner That's post. That's right. And you said, we're getting ready to do the rough plumbing. Are you sure you want it here? So we got the, the client to come in and you know she looked at it and said, oh yeah, I mean, right. clearly that's right. the view, right? Yeah. <laughs> this was really helpful too, thinking sequencing wise, we've got door openings that are three feet wide, right? We've got a hall, we got a corner. Is this going to be able to make it in the front door, or do we have to bring it in here? <laughs> I don't want to bring it in there. The tub weighs 500 pounds. 500 pound tub. Yeah. 490 pounds is the tub. When I saw that on the um, <laughs> on the cut sheet, I thought that that's what it weighed when it was full of water. <laughs> but no, well, we're not that's, that's it what it weighs <laughs> by itself. Okay. We twisted this thing every which way we could to try to get it around the corner of that hallway through this door opening and it just would not go.
um, even though the door opening would be wide enough if we could make the corner, but we can't make the corner. We basically just take out a couple of two by fours and we hold off on sheetrocking that one little piece of wall. I mean, we do actually use mock-ups quite a bit in construction, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. They're helpful, um, not only for our client to envision this, because you know when she saw it, um, she said, geez, it's blocking the window. And it felt yeah. weird to her. And yeah. so we ended up exploring maybe recessing this in the floor yeah. or doing a different tub style altogether. I'm always appreciative when a builder is willing to do that. Yeah. These kinds of projects require a different level of care. So installing the windows, it's always an important milestone here, especially because it's allowing us to move ahead with our electrical rough-in. And that allows us then to move on to things like the loft framing at the barn, we have the, the stair in there. And on the outside, we've been mocking up trim details in preparation for the siding installation. We've been running subgrade utilities, and we had to re-pour all of the footings for the screen porch. The pace is starting to pick up, and I'm so happy to see that as we head into the winter here in Maine, which can be really brutal. Stay tuned for more updates real soon.